Okay, welcome everybody. Um, so welcome for uh, wherever you're from. I believe we've got people right around the globe and certainly from both hemispheres, so that's uh, terrific. One thing before we start is we will be recording this uh, webinar and it will be available next week. So if something goes wrong or you miss anything, as I say, don't worry. All right, let's start. The Canberra Raiders. Uh, when it comes to professional sport, the NRL, that's you know the National Rugby League in Australia, has got to be one of the best and certainly the toughest uh, competitions in the world. And one of the best teams in the NRL, of course, is the well-known the Green Machine, uh, the Canberra Raiders, and that smiling face you see on the screen, uh, their assistant coach, Brett White. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. Just before we get into though the Canberra Raiders, I know there are a lot of people uh, listening today who are, they might be familiar with the Canberra Raiders, but unfamiliar with, with Herman. So I just want to spend a couple of minutes giving you a bit of background about, about Herman. First of all, me, I'm Michael Morgan, CEO of Herman in Asia. Now, what is it that Herman does? In a word, we are all about thinking, okay? So, some of this we all know. Everybody thinks differently. That's the joy of life and that's the frustration of life. Um, the fact though we think differently has a profound effect on the way we work, on the way we communicate, and on the way we collaborate. And Brett's gonna be talking a lot about communication and and collaboration. Secondly, I guess our core idea around thinking is to grow and to change and to perform at the highest level, we have to see our thinking for what it is because sometimes it's appropriate and sometimes perhaps it might be better to think in other ways. And therefore we must accept that the way we think perhaps is not always the only way, that there are uh, other ways. And that's the essence of what Herman does. That's the essence of whole brain thinking. And the whole brain model is on the right. And what we say is that understanding your thinking and the way other people think gives you that perspective and the power, say, to choose. So that's a little bit about what Herman does, giving you that power, that perspective, and it works as an individual and it works as a team. Okay, so let's now begin to talk, say, about the Canberra Raiders and why the Canberra Raiders, I guess, got involved with Herman and started to use uh, the whole brain model. Now, to do that, say, we've got somebody really special today and that's Brett, uh, Brett White, who's the assistant coach of the Canberra Raiders. And when it comes to rugby, rugby league, you know, Brett is up there uh, with the best. A couple of things about Brett is he was uh, 12 years a professional player in the NRL. And that's you know, an amazing achievement just on its own. He played for both uh, the Melbourne Storm and the Canberra Raiders in his career. And I guess the two real highlights were playing State of Origin between uh, 2007 and 2009, and also, of course, playing for uh, Australia. So that's a little bit about Brett, and uh, so he is now assistant coach at the uh, Canberra Raiders. So just before I start asking Brett uh, some questions, um, if any of you listening have a question, there is a Q&A box at the bottom, and what we'll be able to do is get to that at the end, and to say, maybe spend a few minutes answering any questions that, that you might have. But what I'd like to do, Brett, are you ready to roll? Ready to go, Michael. Thanks for having me um, on today on, on this webinar. So it's, um... Okay, well, terrific. And... Um, I mean, the, the first question I've got to ask is, how did you get involved with Herman and whole brain thinking? And the reason I ask is that, you know, some people might think thinking is a, a kind of a long way from rugby league. So why, 
Why the two? Where did you meet Herman and whole brain thinking? Yeah, it was quite interesting. Um, as you said, Michael, I, I was 12 years uh, playing at the, the top level in the NRL. Um, eight of those years were I was always involved in uh, leadership groups, in team leadership groups. So um, when I retired, uh, I went straight into a coaching role here, here at the Raiders. Right. And one of the things, um, you know, my leading style as a player was pretty much get out there uh, on the field, follow my lead in my actions. So when I moved into the coaching role, I, um, I knew that my communication and the thinking, the way everyone thinks differently was going to be a, a really key thing that I needed to get right. Um, so in 2015, um, I actually was lucky enough to meet a guy here in Canberra by the name of Andy Gregory. Uh, Andy Gregory has a company, he's the director of a company here called Yellow Edge uh, Leadership. And Andy come on to help me out as a, as a young coach, um, pretty much to do some shadowing. Um, you come into team meetings, um, at games, uh, uh, before a game, my speech to the players, halftime speeches, and, and was basically you know, looking for the blind spots and how it could be better in, in, in um, you know, the communication side of things as a, as a coach to the players. And it was really interesting because one of the first things he'd done was, was profile me and he'd talk about different quadrants and I, I probably didn't, I didn't um, understand it all that well at the start. Um, but there was one really interesting day where we were heading to a game in, in Sydney and we get on the bus in Canberra. It's a three-hour drive to Sydney and to play that day. And two of the players turned up late to the bus. They were about 20 minutes late. And here I am sitting on the bus with Andy's next to me. And, of course, I'm, I'm a young coach and I'm you know, pulling my hair out, stressing, you know, what am I going to do here? How am I going to handle this? So the players turn up 20 minutes late. We're, we're late going up the highway. And Andy was sitting next to me. He said, how are you going to handle this situation? And I said, mate, I, I'm, I'm ready to, you know, <laughs> yeah, just these players aren't, I, I don't want these players here today. I don't want them, I don't want them playing. They've, they've met, messed everyone's preparation up. And Andy said, well, you need to think about the message that they, they're going to listen to. And, and he went through and, and he gave me four, um, four key things that in my messaging I needed to get across to them. And now the four quadrants of the whole brain model. Yep. And he said, look, you need to tick off the, these different things. He said, I don't know the way they think, but they're going to listen to one of them. And I thought, how does, this, how does he know what to say to people? Like, how, you know, how does he know this is going to work? So I went, okay, all right. So we get up up to Sydney before the game and I had this little checklist that I went through and I sort of made sure I touched on every point when I you know, spoke to them about being late. And the two players went out and brained it. They were our best players. And I thought, wow, if I'd, if I'd handle it the way I was going to handle it and not even play the, the guys, we might have won today. Um, but then my thinking started, how did Andy know how to communicate to these guys? How did he know these? You know, they would listen to one of these points and, and take it on board. So, and then I got um, more interested in the whole brain modelling, um, and then eventually become a certified practitioner. Went through the training um, and learnt more about it, and it's really become a big part of my coaching. Um, the way I, I, I communicate yeah. in in my meetings with the players, um, the way you know our structures and and whatnot. So, okay, so yeah. yeah. Well, let, let, let me ask at that point then, because as you say, you've given a, a great example of, you know, Andy on the bus and how to communicate to two or three people. Um, and that intrigued you. But you took it actually to a next level, didn't you? Because I believe um, from what you said that there was something happening in that 2018 season uh, with the Raiders uh, and you were able to use, I guess, whole brain thinking to to look at the Raiders and you started I believe doing some pretty interesting analysis could you tell us a bit more about that yeah actually I've got I've got some slides here I'm going to going to show now Michael and, and we'll go back and have a look at um, basically the start where things um, started from um, I'm just yep. going to share my screen um, so 
If I can start, the, yep. I guess, a whole brain model journey in the 2018 season. Um, so this year, it was my, 2018 was my first year as a, a, a solely uh, an assistant coach at an NRL level. I previously coached at um, the lower grades and Ricky Stewart put me in charge of the attack and we had a wonderful year on the attack side of um, our, our game model. Yep. Um, so working with Ricky alongside him, um, our attack was on fire. We were second best attacking side in the 2018 season. So we done a really good job in that area. But the interesting thing um, is that the Raiders finished 10th. As you can see here, we're outside the top eight. So we're the second best attack side, but didn't make the top eight. Missed out on finals um, you know, and, and ended up 10th. And it all come down to our defence. We were 12th defensively that year. So there were some areas that, that really needed addressing straight away. Yeah, wow. Um, yep. the, the really interesting part of that is of the 14 games that we lost in the 2018 season, eight of those were by four points or less. So they were really tight games. The games that we were losing were tight. And typically it was at the back end you know, when it was in, the game was in the balance, um, you know, we tended to lose those games where if we were leading by a big margin, we'd go on to win it. Um, right. Of the eight games that we lost, five of those were by two points or less. So it was, you know, under pressure, we just couldn't get across the line. We couldn't win those games when, when the pressure was on. Um, and, you know, probably as a whole, as a, you know, the Raiders in 2018, they were viewed as a very talented a talented team, but we failed under pressure. And that was a big thing as, as a, the, um, when it was in the balance. Uh, so I guess at the end of the season, the three, the three areas that we identified that needed to be uh, improved within the group, uh, obviously our defence, having finished 12th in defence, our leadership. How were our leaders handling these games under pressure? It was, it was a really... You know, it was a, one of our things we needed to address. What was going on in those, those pressure moments? Uh, and the third one was our coach communication. So it, yeah, it wasn't so much our communication to the players, but uh, amongst one, of them, one another. So it wasn't bad. It was just you know, like a lot of organisations. It was, it was, it was you, know, you have frustrations. I, I'd imagine in, in most workplaces, there's you know, little frustrations on the way someone does something. So... We needed to have a bit uh, smooth that out as well. Yep, and I believe you you started by looking at your defence, didn't you? And you did some interesting analysis there. Yeah, well, it was quite interesting. So we we done the end of season review of the two thousand eighteen season, um, and then that's where I become a certified practitioner. So what happened? I, I started to come back and look look through um, these issues through the lens of the whole brain. Um, thinking through the model, looking at each one. So, and, and you're right, it did start with the, the defence. Um, so if I can go to quadrant A, and, and I know, like you said, Michael, there's um, some people probably watching today that aren't quite across a whole brain model. But I'm just going to talk about the A quadrant, um, which is a, uh, a quadrant is a uh, logical, the analytical, the fact, the numbers. Um, people who think strongly in this quadrant um, are probably going to be more interested in this part of part of the presentation. But this is all about the numbers. So we started to look through um, our defence through the numbers, and it was quite easy. We've got a we've got a full time statistician here um, at the Raiders. Um, he's a, a doctorate in maths, so this was quite easy. We said, "Hey, Joel, what what do, what are the things in defence that stand out from a numbers point of view?" Uh, and the first thing he, he said to us is that in the past 10 years, only the top four defensive teams win premierships. So Michael, you know, being 12th um, in defence the year before, it was a long way off a top four and we we're a long way away from being able to win a premiership uh, with defence, yeah. you know, our defence. So what we've done is we gathered the, the five stats um, the good defensive teams all have in common. And one of the ones that really stood out was a, a stat called line break trends that we, that we uh, put together. I'm just going to take a, a moment here just to explain uh, the line break trends 
um, for people. So as you can see, there's, there's uh, a graph there that you know, has numbers sort of all over the place. If I put the, 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 our defensive line there, yep. so we've got our, our defensive line, um, the players on the outside are what we'd call our wingers, and then our forwards are sort of in the middle. So what you can see there is, is where the line breaks occurred, uh, where, where other teams um, ran the ball and broke through the other side. It typically was in the middle of our field. Okay. Yep. So what we did is we um, then we compared that to the three best defensive teams that year. And that's a graph that, that compares to um, the Raiders and compares to the Storm, uh, Roosters and South, which were the, the, the best defensive teams that year. So we compared that. Um, then we put a trend line on it. And you can see they're very similar. So the good defensive teams seem to uh, all defend in, in a certain way where their line breaks occur around the outside right not yeah. in the middle. The interesting thing when you put our trend line on it, <laughs> it was total opposite. You know, we were, we were you know, total opposite to the good defensive team. So it gave us a real understanding of, of what we needed to do. We needed to stop them coming through the middle of us. Um, and, and this is where it sort of, we got into a bit of you know, the ideas around how that was going to happen. And this is where I'd like to go, go across to the, the D quadrant of thinking. So this is where the ideas, um, the holistic uh, um, you know, future strategy type thinking yep. occurs in the, in the D quadrant. So the, the concepts around it. Um, and we sort of, you know, we're talking about, you know, we can't let, um, you know, can't let line breaks occur through us. We've got to be a really solid, strong wall. Uh, so we had this bit of a you know, throwing ideas around that it's a bit like the old, um, I think it's called uh, Atari you know, ping. Oh, the old ping pong game. Yes. Yes, that's yeah. it. So, you know, it's very similar to rugby league because there is only one ball we need to defend. We only just need to stop that one ball coming through the middle, middle of our line. Um, so then you know, we threw some ideas around as coaches all, all sitting around in an office. And you know, then it got me thinking about a, a book I'd read, which is called The Gates of Fire. Um, this is a historical fiction novel. And it's about the Spartan warriors I was reading at the time. And it talked a lot about um, how the Spartans trained with their, their shield wall and they'd have this shield and they'd protect each right. other with the, and use their shield. So then we, we started to talk about Vikings and, and using, this, using our shields to protect anyone, you know, the ball coming through our defensive yeah. line. Which of is, course, the, yeah, the Canberra Raiders, the, the Vikings, a perfect metaphor. Yeah, that, well, that's it. It, it ties in, you know, yeah. into it. And one of the other coaches said, well, funny enough, I'm, I'm watching Vikings on Netflix at the moment. <laughs> you know, it's funny how all these ideas, these creative ideas that, you know, mm. um, that, that start to come out. So then we come up with the shield wall. That's what the Vikings call their... You know, when they, they go into a defence uh, strategy, they call shield wall and everyone sort of forms up and you don't let anyone through it. And that was going to tie into our, our stats that we'd yeah. identified. So then it was, okay, we've, we've got these ideas. Um, how do we coach it? So then we go down to the, the B quadrant. The B quadrant's all about um, the thinking around the organisation, uh, the detail, the planning. So we had to plan as coaches, mm. uh, you know, to coach um, these ideas. So it's all the X's and O's of coaching. And we come up with a bit of a strategy where we had a, a ratio of, um, you know, if we'd done defence, that if, if our defensive line got broke through the middle, it was six push-ups. If they went around the outside, it was one push-up. So we had this ratio. Uh, and, and all our drills, 80% of our training was based around this. Um, wow. you know, so it, it, it's all the... The coach and the detailed, we, we coach the players not to let anyone come through us. We had to be good tacklers. Um, and, and the way we communicated and talked in around that. Of course, working as one line, the players had to train as one line um, all, all together. 
Then the final quadrant is, is a C quadrant, which is the interpersonal, the feelings, um, the, the connection, the emotion. So, and of course, a lot of players, you know, there's players that, you know, they'll listen to these messages when you talk in these areas. So mm. we had to make sure we covered this quadrant. So that come a lot of our, our talking about, you know, the feeling we want players to feel. Um, yeah, we want to be like Vikings. Of course, Michael, we're, we're here in uh, Canberra. We play down in Melbourne. We play uh, Townsville, um, New Zealand. Vikings, what did Vikings used to do? They'd get in their boats, go off to these far off places <laughs> and, um, and they'd go and take things. Well, we want to go and take two points every week and we want to go and get a win every week. So a lot of our coaching, a lot of our messaging then become around talking about how does that feel? How does it feel to be a Viking? Mm. How to mm. go off these places yeah, and, and being a group and um, these sort of things. About the trust. If, if I know the person next to me is protecting me and the space next to me, I've got to trust. I've got to trust in that person. That person's got to trust in me. Um, that's safe. I feel safe when I'm with, with my yep. teammates. So these yeah. are a lot of the messaging around these the, the C quadrant. Yeah. And of course, um, yeah. sorry, the, the, the connection. Sorry, Michael, the, the, the connection there is, I explain it as, as um, it's like 70,000 stars. Oh, yes, yes. But, but, you know, you, you see birds when they fly in a group um, and one moves and they all move and, and then they move again and they, they all move. They've got this connection to them. Yeah. Um, and that's yeah. what we had to be. Yeah. Now, isn't it here, though, that... Um, I mean, this is a, a, a fantastic story. There's no doubt about it. But to me, it gets better because isn't this when you have that real aha? Because if you go back to the analysis you did, um, you know, the second best attacking team and yet what was it, the 12th, you know, in terms of defence and everything else. But you were saying that a lot of the times that you lost a game it was in the last few minutes and it was only by a little. And there, there seemed to be something in there, wasn't there, that when you looked at the profiles, you got a major aha. Yeah, correct, Michael. That, that, and this was our, as you talk, the aha moment where it sort of all went, wow. So we had our, our eight leaders of our group, we had them all profiled and... Um, and what we done is we overlaid those profiles over each other and, and had a team profile, which uh, yep. I'll show. So this was with our leadership group. Um, so, and when we overlaid them, the average Sorry, of the Sorry, can team... I just interrupt? The, the leadership group you're talking about here is the six or eight key players on the field, isn't it? Yes. yes. So the ones that are out there, the, the, um, the ones that pretty much run the team out on the field... The um, older, more experienced players. So the, the the ones the younger guys sort of follow out there. Yep. Uh, the, the leaders are the ones that that pretty much steer the ship and have control of the team on the field. So it was really interesting when you you know when we when we done this and had a look at it. Um, and and those that that understand the the whole brain model, the the Herman model, is the profile as you can see, uh, Michael. Here, the, the, the strong line is the group's thinking, um, normal thinking in terms of, you know, if they're at training or every day uh, or whatnot. The interesting part here is a dotted line is they're thinking under pressure. How do they <laughs> think when they're put under pressure? So as you can see, there was a big shift in the red there. Um, so under pressure, late in games, they'd start to go into this red thinking, which is all the emotion. So it start to play with emotion and you know, try and be more aggressive and, and, um, you know, and, and, and what the funny thing, what would actually happen is they'd start to come away from their structure, uh -huh. as you see here in the green quadrant. So they get, they do less thinking on their structure that they're trained to do every week. They come less thinking in their analysing. So what was happening late in those games? They'd stop analysing what was actually going on. What, what did we need to do? Uh, what was opposition doing? So they, they'd think less about that and, and more about the emotion side of the game. Yeah. And again, playing on emotion, which is 
yeah, that's great. But if you've got too much of it and you don't have enough detail and you don't have enough analyzing, um, you, you run into some dangers there. So the strengths and weaknesses, the strength is that they were more emotional, they were more hyped up, but because they lost that detail, um, this is where they, they, they fell apart. Uh, yeah, okay, but I mean, that I get, and that's a phenomenal aha, as you say, the shift under pressure in the last few minutes of the game away from structure into emotion and it begins to fall apart. The problem, though, with the game of rugby league is you can't stop it and say, hang on, guys, you know, you can't, well, American football has a time out. You don't. So what did you do? How did well, you fix that? The, the interesting thing is when we look back at our, our, um, our games and you, you talk about there isn't a stop, we've only got half time to, to sort yeah. of refocus. And you know, early in our halves, we were good because we were focused. But in, into the pressure, you're right. We, we can't stop the game and have a time out. So the players, what they actually done is once they understood this and, and what was going on, uh, it was really clear to them. They needed to refocus. They needed to reset out there and, and come back and, and sort of go through the quadrants and, and make sure we're balanced. We're, as, as we talk about, whole brain. We're, we're equal in all, all quadrants. Um, so the interesting thing the players come up with was they called it a Herman circle. <laughs> the so, Herman circle. Yeah. So out on the field, when, when there was a stop in play, for example, uh, if we'd scored a try or we had a try scored against us, we have about a minute to get together um, and the players have a quick chat and then you go again. So we use this, uh, utilise this opportunity to, to get together. They'd call Herman. That all the players would come in, they'd get in a circle, and what they'd do is go around the, the quadrants and make sure that you know, they're analysing what the other team were doing. They were talking about their yellow quadrant, their strategy, their emotions, the red quadrant, you know, how are their uh, emotions? Are they in check? And then obviously the green one as well, which is uh, the detail and our structure and, and making sure we're, we're all in order. Um, and it was amazing to watch them, them go through this, this process every time there was a, a break in play. Um, and, and they didn't just do it, you know, they, they didn't just do it out on during games. You know, they'd do it at training, you know, during training sessions regularly. They'd call Herman. Uh, things weren't going right or, or any Herman. They'd all come together and circle up. So, Michael, next time you're watching the, Can the Canberra Raiders play on TV and, and there's a try and you see them get together in a circle you'll know exactly they're going through the, the, the quadrant, uh, each quadrant and assessing yeah. where they are. Wow. Okay. Now, I mean, yeah, that, that's a phenomenal uh, to me story because, yeah, it's one thing to do the analysis. It's another, you know, to have the ahas, but actually to, to implement it, but also to implement it like this in real time when you don't have time, no, is yeah, is is amazing. Now, I'm God, I'm exhausted. I feel as though I've played a game. Uh, <laughs> the leadership, though, wasn't the only thing that you got involved with, was it? Because I think you also saw that you could apply whole brain thinking and thinking preferences, yeah, to obviously the the coaching staff. Yeah, well, like I spoke about earlier, um, the the. Communication amongst um, the coaches, um, and I'll, I'll just show the next slide um, with Ricky. Um, you know, it, it wasn't that it was bad or anything, but like all organisations, I said before, there is there, there's always that little thing that's just that um, annoyance or, or way someone does something. Um, <laughs> and, and it was quite interesting that that um, so when I become a certified practitioner, the, one of the first things I've done was. I profiled um, Ricky, our head coach. Um, you know, Ricky's probably best known for um, his passion and fire. He's so passionate about you know, the club and the team and, and his, his fire and um, the way he coaches. He's the only coach that coaches from the sideline in the NRL. Um, he, he likes to be down there. He likes to feel the energy of the players and the energy of the game. He likes to, the players to feel um, you know, his energy. He likes to be amongst them. 
uh, connected with them. Rather than most coaches sit up high in a box and look down and analyse what's going on, Ricky likes to feel what's going on. So <laughs> That was a strong red quadrant profile, I would think. <laughs> yes, he is. He, uh, I think it, his profile under pressure in the red quadrant goes out uh, 102. <laughs> so, yeah, during games under pressure, he is that passion. He is that fire. Um, it, it's great to coach alongside him because he does have so much passion for it. Um, the really interesting thing was when I did debrief Ricky and I went through his profile with him and I'll just show you, this was his words, was um, take this profile and show everyone in this organisation so when they come into my office, they know how to communicate. <laughs> it was like this aha moment for Ricky just going, right, I want everyone to communicate with me the way I, I, I like to communicate. Yeah. Um, now, didn't you tell me a story about uh, the statisticians who used to come into Ricky with spreadsheets and yeah? So our, our, obviously our, our performance department they work a lot of um, GPS um, running meters of how far and how fast players have run and, and there's a lot of numbers to that. Um, <laughs> and, and this was part of it as, as talking to the performance department of um, you know that uh, Ricky. Yeah, he, he understands that they're important. The numbers are important. But him looking at a spreadsheet, it's like, you know. <laughs> so that, now they, they, the uh, performance department actually talk to him about the way the players are feeling. That, you know, they're feeling tired or they're feeling full of energy. And for Ricky, it's a, it's a lot clearer message than looking at a spreadsheet and all these numbers and just going, I know this is important, but, you know, it's not the way I like to communicate. Um, so it's quite interesting. So right from the get-go, Ricky really understood um, the profile, his profile. Um, now, like I said, this is this is a cutout. I found um, yeah, his door is always open and his heart is always full. That is him. That is that high red interpersonal. Um, yeah, he's got a, a wonderful relationship with his players. Very interpersonal. Um, anyone that's involved in the club, he's got a lot of time for. He likes to connect to people um, that's Ricky's profile but when you compare that to my own profile I sit over on the other side a bit on the analyze the order um, the, the blue and green quadrants so I'm a bit different sort of I'd like to be up higher looking down analyzing things so the funny thing with this and I, I talked about you know there's always that bit of a you know in, in any office that just he thinks differently to me yes, type, yeah. type situation. So, of course, you gave Ricky headaches and, and just <laughs> frustrations. Yeah. But the great thing about it, we're able to talk through each other's profile, understand each other, the way we like to think, the way we like to do things. Um, and it brought along a lot of understanding of each other. And you know, now we can have a laugh and um, about it. We talk in, we talk in colours. Um, Excellent. Yeah. Uh, you know, you're too far into the green. You're, you're trying to be too organised, or you, you're too red. There's too much emotion here. We need to we need to come back and analyse things. Mm. Uh, so it's actually yeah. put a, a nice feel to it. <laughs> the dynamic duo. Yeah. Yep. So let me, I guess, move now to the. I mean, the the big question is is results. Um, because a lot of the clients we work with, you know, are big organisations. Uh, and they're like, I don't know, the, the analogy in today's world is they're like cruise ships, that they're so big and they're so slow to respond and you talk about results, but you never really know perhaps whether you, know, you did get a result or if that result was due to what you did or anything else. Your game is very different because you go week by week, you know, and what you coach and everything else on a Monday and Tuesday, you want to see results on a, uh, on a Saturday or, or Sunday, game day. So you started by telling us the performance, you know, in 2018. How did you go in 2019? Did this work? So, yeah, you, you're right. We, we, um, you know, we get, um, yeah, our results are every week and determine you know, how we go. So if I go back, uh, go to the 2019 season. So like I said, the, the whole we started thinking through the whole brain model at the start of the season. 
uh, at the end of the season, the Raiders finished fourth on the table. So we'd gone from 10th, we'd moved our way up to fourth. But the really interesting thing was with our defence. So we'd, we'd started at 12th. We finished the third best defensive team. And like I said earlier, you've got to be in the top four defensive teams um, to, win, to win the competition, uh, to become, you know, to win the premiership. So we were now in the, the top four, we were third. And the results of that is we got to play in the 2019 grand final. And um, while we didn't win it, we were uh, very close. Um, and it was quite a close game. And you know, I think we were um, probably the better team on the on the day. Um, you know, I was really, really proud of the boys um, in the in the grand final. It was, a, it was a wonderful moment just to see how far, you know, how far they had come. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, awesome results, and but not only awesome results. I believe you've got a little bit of a video to show this Viking wall because I watched a lot of rugby league, uh, but I now. Yeah, I'm going to look at it differently because, as you said, I, I had no idea about um, the idea of you had of you've only got to stop the ball penetrating and how you can move that wall, you know, to keep the, the ball going. So, yeah, I've, I've got a video here, Michael. I'll just show it. It only goes for a minute. But the video was, um, was put together to show the, the players the night before the grand final of last year. Um, would put it together to um, capture everything they'd done and how far they'd come. Um, and, and I won't show, look, I've only cut out two, two small bits, the start of it and the, the finish of the video that they got to watch the night before the grand final to, to show how far they'd come. So I'll show those the uh, uh, video now. At the start of the year, we had some things to work on. We set our sights on improving our foundations of our defence. We've now built a defensive structure that under pressure we know we can rely on. I'm not I'm not into the, the sort of stuff that, that Whitey's into and the I didn't didn't capture it as much, but there was just a moment that it it hit me. It felt like the Viking wall. We'd been under the pump. It was just this moment where every single player took a step forward at the same time. It was it was just reminded me of the Vikings where Whitey just said we all taking a step forward at the same time and you know, backing each other up and scrambling our asses off and I guess from there on we'll we're pretty comfortable after that too. Okay. So there you go, Michael. I must say, like, as a also as a as a disclaimer, you know that um, you know we had so we have so much good things going on. Um, we have so many good things going on at the club. You know our, um, our recruitment, our other coaches that I haven't talked about here. Uh, yeah, they've had a massive impact. Our performance department, our commercial uh, sponsors, all these things. We, as an organisation, we're in a really good place. But what whole brain, um, what Herman was able to do for us was just, I guess, attach a couple of wires that just needed needed to a little adjustments. Yeah, yeah. And the results were massive. We were able to have um, a, a big turnaround off the back of that. Um, so it wasn't we weren't we were, we were in a wonderful place. It just improved us that. that yeah, that. It was just that. Yeah, added bit. Yeah. Yeah. That was thank you, Brett. I mean, that's been just a uh, an. Yeah, awesome story and, and yeah, awesome examples and just an awesome application and so forth. Now, before we wrap up, we do have a number of questions that I'd just love to advance off you. Um, first of all, Brett, quite a few people are asking, what's your profile? My uh, <laughs> 1121. Okay. Um, so one of, the, one of the interesting things is um, that my work on and my improvement is in is the red quadrant, yes. uh, which is my two, my least preference um, is you know, pretty much what Ricky's really good at is I need to improve uh, as a coach that interpersonal and, and um, side of my coaching. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, and Ricky's that been able to actually talk to me about that and go, Hey mate, you need to work on this. You know, this is a part I already felt 
you needed to work on, but this yeah. allows me to now talk to you um, okay. around these quadrants. So. Yeah, because that was another question was, um, you know, uh, what was uh, not so much Ricky's profile, because you talked about that, but, you know, his dominant red. And was it difficult, I guess, to, to shift that or did he really understand that you were different? But it does sound as though yeah, you've become a good, a good pair. Yeah, well, that's it. Being able to talk in colours and, and understand that that's how he thinks. Um, and when I talk to him, the best way to communicate is, yeah, is talking excellent. in that quadrant. Yeah. Okay. Another question we got from Jason is, was there a difference between, you know, the players, forwards and backs uh, in rugby league? Uh, in, in their profiles? Yeah. Um, look, off the top of my head, I, I don't think there was. One of the, one of the interesting things was, um, and it's something you've been talking about uh, on our weekly forums, Michael, is uh, the, the cultures and the different thinking between cultures. Um, right. Of course, we've got a lot of uh, Polynesian um, uh, players, and yes. they tend to be a lot more interpersonal. Um, yeah, and so they they tend to have more of a higher uh, a red red dominance in the in that, mm. that quadrant. So it's quite interesting. Um, it's not so much the backs and forwards difference, but the, the cultures. Yes. Yep. Yep. And a, another question on that, I I guess was, um, did you? change uh, the leadership team? Did you pull people out and put people in to get a better balance or did you work with the leadership team as they were? No, the, the leadership um, team uh, stayed the same throughout the year. Um, we had um, one of those players leave at the end of the year. We've had another couple come in. So we're just, we were in the process um, a couple of months ago before everything, you know, the disruptions happened to reprofile and, and and um, you know, have that team profile put together and have a look at, you know, are there things there that we're missing? Are there blind spots that, yeah. that we're yeah. not seeing that, that this will be able to identify for us? Okay, all right. And another question from, from Dom, I guess a blue quadrant question. <laughs> Would you, um, what percentage you know, uh, of the improvement or the results would you actually attribute to HBDI and whole brain thinking? Could you? You go that far? Because you were saying you did a lot of things. It's just in the mix. Look, there were, there were um, a number of changes um, yeah. after the 2018 season. One of those being one of our, uh, we had a new assistant coach come in who was uh, Andrew McFadden, who's a very experienced coach that yeah. had previously yeah. been a head coach of the New Zealand Warriors. Um, so, yeah, like, I don't want to be taking away from the work that those guys done um, yeah. and, and definitely not saying this was everything. But it, it allowed us to improve yeah. um, in, in so many areas and, and more understand um, yeah. and communicate. So, communicate a, yeah, a very important part, as you say, of the mix of, of the blend. Um, one other question Paul is asking is, um, do you know, I mean, with five minutes to go and you know, two points behind or whatever, um, what... Do you know what was said in the Herman Circle or what were some of the insights? I mean, because it obviously worked. Yeah, it, it, it just allows them to um, understand that, you know, when one of the players are talking about a, you know, um, our structure, that that's just as important to the way we, you know, we need, need to play emotionally and um, aggressive and all these sort of yeah. thinking styles. So it just allowed everyone to understand that, that, all these, everyone thinks differently and yeah. the messages are all really important and we, we need to uh, uh, talk about a, each one of those. Yeah. Okay. All right. Phenomenal. We, we're still getting lots of questions and I, I'm afraid we can't, you know, answer them all. But I would say, Brett, I'm sure in the next couple of weeks, if anybody wants to get in touch with you, they're, you know, very welcome. In fact, somebody here is asking, are you going to uh, get into you know, whole brain thinking and you know, coaching outside of uh, football after uh, as a next career? So you're going to be in, in great demand. So that's yeah. terrific. If yeah. anyone does want to get in contact, um, my email is uh, brett at raiseyourgame.net.au. Um, so yeah. Um, I, and yeah, we can share that as well. 
Yep. Okay, there is one question, and it, it's the question I guess I was going to end up with anyway, so it's, it's probably a, a good way to finish. Um, I mean, yeah, you've shared a phenomenal story with us, Brett, and as you say, the results speak for themselves, and the way you, you know, it came alive, and the Herman Circle and everything else. One final question, though, is the 2020 season looks as though it's going to be a season like none other. You know, we're all horribly aware of what's happening around the world. And yet the NRL is probably leading the world in, you know, in trying to come out of lockdown and trying to make a contact sport, a team sport, you know, work in a world where, you know, it, it kind of shouldn't work. So not only are you going to have all the usual pressures, you know, the season, but you've also now got lockdown. You were telling us earlier about these new protocols. You've got testing. You've got empty stadiums. You've got more testing and, and, and so forth. So um, I guess the question is, uh, <laughs> do you see whole brain thinking playing a part in the 2020 season? Michael, it's going to be critical. There's so many challenges. There's so many problems for us. There's, um, you know, our thinking agility um, has to be has to be really um, on the ball. We need to make sure that we can adjust our thinking. You know, just this week we've had our our training days um, change nearly every day. Um, mm. we, we we need to adjust to that. We need to um, keep thinking creatively. Come up with you know, new ideas to handle different problems. We need to keep putting those in order. Um, structures around that. Um, you know, how are the players feeling about all this? So we need to constantly be going through um, and doing a checkpoint on each quadrant and making sure that, you know, again, we don't have any blind spots. We don't want to miss anything. Yeah. We want to make sure that everything's covered. Um, and that's what the, the model allows us to do. Okay. All right. Well, again, thank you, Brett. That is such an awesome story on, on so many uh, yeah, on so many levels, and it's a great example of the model as well. The analysis, the ahas, the insight, the linking it to people, you know, the Viking wall, the structure, just, you know, an amazing story. And I'm, I'll just leave you with one thought, that I'm absolutely certain when it comes to grand final time, you will be able to lift the cup Let's so, hope so, Michael. I'll, I'll bring it back on for another webinar and, and we can have a little, um, all right. so, little celebration. Excellent. Yep. Okay. So we will be back. Uh, thank okay. you. Thank, thank you for you all your yeah. work too with um, yeah. Yeah, the Camera Raiders and the Green Machine. Thank you.